as should be quite evident, I am not a design guy. As should also be quite evident, there are not a lot of design guys in the FOSS world, and it really shows. But they do exist. And for about seven months now, there has been an ongoing discussion in the GNOME project about something you're going to constantly see, but probably never really think about. The default font being used. Now, the current font in the upstream GNOME project is known, and I'm just going to say it as Cantrell. It might be Cantrell. I don't care. I'm going to say Cantrell. This has been the default for about 14 years now. This is just in the upstream project though, in the more config heavy distributions of GNOME, they do often change it. On Ubuntu, they use, as you might expect, the Ubuntu font, and then on PopOS, they use Thera Sans. But if we're talking about a more clean distribution of GNOME, something like Fedora, they do use the default, that being, again, Cantrell. But what's actually wrong with Cantrell if it's been the default font for the past 14 or so years? It seems like it's doing the job. It seems like it's perfectly fine. And yes, it is perfectly fine. It will do the job. But there are things that are better, as discussed in a thread created by Cassidy James Blade. Switch font to Inter. This is the new font that is almost certainly going to be what they swap to. It might change between now and GNOME 47, but this is very likely what it's going to be. Contro has served us well, but we've been wondering if it would be more beneficial to default to be more modern and well-maintained typeface, especially one that is actively developed to support new font features as they developed. Inter fits this bill and is viewed favorably by some folks on the design team. Now, if you're like me, and you don't come from a design background, you just install a font, you change to a new font, and you don't really think about what a font actually does. Seeing a phrase like, actively developed to support new font features as they are developed, you're probably going to think, I didn't realize fonts needed to be developed after they were done, or fonts needed to be maintained. Turns out, they actually do. In a hyper-narrow use case where all you are doing is typing standard English, for example, a font, once it is done, is basically going to be fine forever. There are some additional things you might want, but it will work for those use cases until the end of time. English, until it changes into another language sometime in the future, is always going to be English. But the world is a lot bigger than just English. Even in the context of just English though, there are basic things missing. For example, three years ago opened, provide an italic style. You don't need italics every second of every day. But if you need italics, it's kind of nice to have italics. And former versions did have italic weights. Another thing, we have language features not used in English. For example, certain diacritics, like the little line above an A here, or a little line above the L and the W here. In Cantorell, they were just not rendering properly. Or we have more diacritic issues. How about things like, what is the correct way to render an ellipsis? Should it be the dots really far apart, or should they be close together? Neither of these is a correct way to do it. There are different people that will argue different ways of doing so. Also, things like Arabic support. Now, Cantrell is an old font, and just like old software projects, at a point in time, it was really well maintained. It had a healthy community around it trying to fix these issues. But then over the years, people move away from the project, they start working on other things, and eventually you have a lot of really old, really important open issues that are probably never going to be addressed. But when we consider another font like Inter, this is a lot more of a modern font. This has an active community around it. This has a lot of people actively using it, actively testing it, and actively reporting issues. And the guy that originally made the font is still actively working on it. This hasn't been handed over to another maintainer. 
when it comes to adding font features, you're not just trying to fix things that should be working in the first place. There are additional things being added into fonts that may be addressing things that are a fairly niche use case, or in some cases, might be addressing an entirely new use case. The open type format has a specification for different things you might want to add into a font for various different languages. Not everything is relevant to English. And some of these don't need to be there for a font to function. They're entirely optional things that just make a font feel like it does more things. And Inter has a list of some of those cool features. I don't know why their background is yellow. Just ignore it. Things like discretionary ligatures. So here we have FFI, and this is being combined into one object. Once again, FFI, here we have FJ. Now, some of these I don't particularly like, and I've never seen them be used before, like an exclamation mark and a question mark being combined into one object. I've literally never seen this. If I saw this, I would assume it's a bug. But there's also more reasonable things like tabular numbers. So even though the font is not a monospace font, you might want numbers to be treated in a monospace way. If you're dealing with a spreadsheet, this makes comparing numbers visually more pleasant. Fraction support. I hope you did maths class and I don't need to explain what a fraction is. Both superscript support and subscript support and scientific inferiors. So if you're doing H2O, you can write it how it actually should look. Again, hopefully I don't need to explain denominators and numerators. Another thing you might want to have, slashed zero, or maybe alternative digits. So there are multiple correct ways to write a nine or write a three or write a four, and this allows you to swap between those different renderings. Another important one though is disambiguation. So in a lot of fonts, inter included, capital I, lowercase l, look identical. Now, they might not be exactly the same. There might be a slight difference in their weight. I can't tell the difference. And if you're someone who is not English native, this just looks like LLL. And that's obviously confusing. So disambiguation allows for a different looking I to be used and a couple of other characters. And it also has square quotes and commas and round quotes and commas. And I didn't go over every single one of the features here, but my point here is much like software, a font is never actually complete. You might have all of the features that you want to add right now, but it's still going to need additional maintenance as over time the environment that font or that software is going to be running is going to change. So you might need to adjust it, maybe make some minor changes here and there, maybe fix issues as they discovered and keep it well supported. When this issue was made, Intel was a much better supported choice, but it doesn't mean it was already a perfect choice. It did have some issues to be resolved. One of those issues is it doesn't have a monospace version. Now, Contrail doesn't have a monospace version either, but they were using Source Code Pro to pair with Contrail, and that pairing made sense. But Source Code Pro doesn't really fit with Inter. Thankfully, being such a popular font, this is not a new issue being brought up, and has already been discussed by the creator, Rasmus Anderson, back in 2019. As many of you mentioned monospace, here are a few great monospace fonts that pair well with Inter. Roboto Mono, Hack, IBM Plex Mono, and Recursive. Of these ones, I don't know which my favorite would be. Probably, probably IBM Plex Mono, but font choices are always going to be a very personalized thing. Now, Inter is not the only font that was being suggested here. Another person suggested, why not use Geist by Vercel? This, I think, is also a really nice looking font. And maybe in the future is something they could consider swapping to. The issue now is it's really new. And we don't have enough confidence that it'll be well supported enough. There is already a big community who's been there for a long time around Inter. And when making a choice like this on a desktop as big as GNOME, you don't want to make a potentially risky choice. 
This person here suggested why not use the Ubuntu font, which is being used on a version of GNOME, the version shipping on Ubuntu. There's two main reasons not to do that though. Firstly, it's really tied into the Ubuntu branding and would look really awkward adopting it in upstream GNOME. The bigger issue is the license of the Ubuntu font. This has been evaluated as non-free by Fedora and Debian. Their license is called the Ubuntu font license. They're not using something that is generally considered open, like SIL open font, which is what tons and tons of other licenses are using. Someone also brought up the issue of the capital I's and lowercase L's, which I don't know why this ever is a way that fonts function. It just looks broken. This is the way the font operates by default though, and when they went and tested it with disambiguation enabled, it seems like it works just fine in GTK, and it does properly distinguish the capital I's and lowercase L's. The other problem is a more serious problem. This is a rendering issue with a Cyrillic and Latin character, which did end up being reported at the time, and the great thing about having a well-maintained font has been resolved. There was another issue with a diacritic being used in Hungarian, also has now been resolved. There was also an issue making use of all caps where for some reason some of the capitals were being rendered in a system known as small caps which is basically a smaller version of a regular capital. I don't know why that system was ever created but it does exist. The way it was resolved is just temporarily removing small caps and bringing it back in a future version when it actually works properly. And because Control was the default font for so long, there were also some, I guess, UI hacks built specifically around using Control. So if you change the font to something like Inter, the hacks break and things don't render correctly anymore, leading to some of this text being cut off. All of these issues now have been addressed, but prior to them being addressed, another issue was opened. Switch font to Noto Sans. This was created as a direct response to a lot of these issues existing and at the time not having been addressed. Whilst the Noto Sans font is a great font and a great project, the response here is a little bit more mixed. Not aggressively mixed like you'd see over in Wayland, but definitely not as supportive of it. And the main reason is stylistic, and trying it again now, I'm still convinced by it on that basis. I think there's a reason why, despite having commissioned Nodo, Google doesn't use it by default in Android. Pre-installing Nodo as a fallback seems like a good idea if we're not doing that already, though this might be a distro packaging configuration issue, but I'm also minus one on Nodo as default for stylistic reasons. If we're switching to something else, it should be an upgrade visually, not a downgrade. If you put the Interfont and the Nodo font side by side, they're both good looking fonts. But, I don't know, I kind of lean towards Intra as well. Moving away from the GNOME project for just a moment, over in KDE Plasma, Noto is the default font. As such, Neil Gomper here is in favour of the font for three reasons. One, uniform readability across all languages and most font engine configurations. Well maintained across different styles, sans, serif, monospace, etc. and support for variable forms. And good coherency at small point sizes, which is a big deal with things like emblems and such. I would strongly encourage GNOME to consider switching to the Noto family of fonts by default as well. It would be a crazy world if the one thing that GNOME and KDE can agree on stylistically is something as personal as your font choice. I don't expect it to happen, but maybe there is a world where that's possible. In a recent commit merger, this change has landed in GNOME. It's still entirely possible for the release of GNOME 47 that it does end up being reverted. I find that highly unlikely because most people that are involved in GNOME are in favour of the font change. So unless something wild happens, like, I don't know, the creator turns out to be some psychopath, this is probably the route they're going to go down. Now, if we're being technically accurate, it's not the interfont being used, it is known as intervariable, and the variable part is fairly important.
Traditionally, with a font, you'd have a set bold, a set thin, a set regular, a set extra bold, so on and so forth. With a variable font, basically you have a variable that controls the thickness of the font. So if you want something in between bold and regular, that can be done. If you want something even more bold than extra bold or heavy or whatever the top one is, you can do that. So in certain cases, maybe certain weights make more sense. It just gives you more flexibility. Whilst there is a lot of discussion about this being just a font change, you can go and test this out today. All you need to do is go and download the Interfont. It's probably going to be in your package manager and then just set the default font in GNOME. And now you get to see what the Interfont looks like in GNOME. And maybe you want to try it out in something outside of GNOME. One thing that I've been doing is I've actually been using it in KDE Plasma. And honestly, I think the font looks pretty clean. And I'm probably just going to keep it like this. As I established at the start, I am not a design guy. I don't know much about design. I just know what I think looks good. And I think the font looks pretty good. So I recommend you go and try it out and see how you feel about it yourself. If you don't like it, you could always change it back to Cantrell anyway. Again, it's just a font choice. What do you think of the font? Have you tried it out yourself? Do you like the font already? Are you already using it? I would like to know your favorite monospace font. Let me know down below. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I run JetBrains Mono Medium. It's a pretty nice font. Go try it out.